It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 3. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here, the Eric Erickson Show across the nation. I am delighted to have most of you (laughs) with me. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Um, I, I had somebody yelling at me about the, 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 what I read about the Forsyth County school district in Georgia with the mom reading from the book. All I did was I read the newspaper and she got mad at me. I read literally the first two paragraphs. So the point of the woman who, who was not allowed to continue speaking was that she was reading from a book, um, and they shut her down because it was profane, but the book was allowed in the libraries, but they wouldn't, it, it was bad enough that they wouldn't actually let her read, let her read it at the school board meeting, which is something that's happening around the country is a great smart way to show the double standard out there. Uh, but man, I mean, just don't yell at me for, for reading out of the newspaper. Gosh, I'm going to read out of the newspaper. Now there's a story. I don't care where you are. I literally, 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 literally do not care where you are. You need to hear this story. It is a Georgia story. I get flack sometimes saying, oh, for a national show, you need to. Well, Georgia's the center of the political universe right now. And this is the big national story of the day. And I happen to know about the big national story of the day. In Fulton County, Georgia, that is Atlanta, Georgia. In Fulton County, Georgia, the district attorney, Fannie Willis, has convened a special grand jury to investigate actions of the former president to try to subvert the election in Georgia. Allegedly subvert the election in Georgia. Fannie Willis is interviewing a number of public officials, including Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State, to whom Trump very infamously made a phone call where he spent an hour trying to get Raffensperger to find just over 11,000 votes. Now, you've heard from the January 6th commission about those 11,700 some odd votes Trump said were there. And all he needed to do was get Brad Raffensperger to get them. What you haven't heard is the part of the phone call where really what this is, is that Donald Trump believes that there were more than 100,000 improperly cast votes in Georgia. And all he needs are those 11,700 some odd votes. That's all he needs. And that's, that is when you heard the, the January 6th commission play the audio of Trump saying, just give me 11,700 votes. They left out the context of he was wrong, but he truly believed. So he had no intent to commit a crime. He truly believed, based on what his lawyers were telling him, that there were over 100,000 fraudulently cast votes in Georgia. They had found them, and they were documented. And he was telling Brad Raffer, I just need 11,700, the margin of victory, whatever it is. I just need that many. Just pick whichever ones you want to give me and give them to me because you got over 100,000 that were wrong. That takes away the intent of the to commit the crime. And that's been left out of the story. I don't think this is a, a, a crime in which the president should go to prison, let alone be indicted. I don't think there was a crime there if he really did believe, based on what evidence had been given to him by his team, that there were all these votes there. Whether the team was right or wrong, and I think the team was wrong, the president had no willful desire to throw out a, or steal an election. He thought the election had been stolen from him. So there's that intent component. 
But the Democratic, and it's relevant, Democratic District Attorney in Fulton County has decided to, to make a national name for herself out of this and investigate. A special grand jury was convened, and a special grand jury cannot indict. A special grand jury can just decide if there is enough evidence for a regular grand jury to indict. It's being overseen by a well-respected judge in Fulton County. It has gotten decidedly more political, and you need to understand this because I find it discrediting of the entire affair. One of the people, Fannie Willis, the district attorney, wishes to interview is the governor of the state of Georgia, Brian Kemp. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that Brian Kemp did what he thought was his constitutional duty. In large part, people miss this. People who hate Kemp and think he should have stopped this miss the point that in Georgia's constitution, there is literally nothing the governor could have done. The Constitution of the state of Georgia prohibits a governor from doing anything in an election. That's the Secretary of State's role, a separate constitutional officer. Down in Florida, in New Jersey, and a few other places, the governor appoints the Secretary of State, and the Secretary of State serves at the pleasure of the governor, just like the U.S. Secretary of State serves at the pleasure of the president. They can be fired at will by the uh, chief executive. Georgia has a separate constitutional office for secretary of state. It's an elected position. The governor cannot fire, hire, or do anything with that office. And that office is what oversees elections. And under the Georgia constitution, the governor is absolutely prohibited from doing anything, playing any role in an election. But Trump tried. So the district attorney, Fannie Willis, wants to talk to Brian Kemp and get him before the grand jury to answer questions. And what they agreed to do to keep this out of politics, to keep it out of politics so it doesn't look political at all, they agreed to do a videotape statement. They agreed to do this videotape statement towards the end of July. And Kemp would answer questions and give his sworn video statement of what exactly it was that had happened, the conversations he had. Here is the statement or the article from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution dated June 23rd, 2022. Governor Brian Kemp will deliver testimony next month to Fulton County prosecutors investigating Donald Trump's efforts to overturn Georgia's 2020 election, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution has learned. But unlike the parade of witnesses who have appeared at the Fulton Courthouse to answer questions in front of a special grand jury, the Republican will instead deliver a sworn recorded statement according to a letter from the Fulton County District Attorney's Office dated Wednesday. The letter to Kemp's attorney, Nathan Wade, a special prosecutor hired by Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis to help with the investigation, said the DA's office agreed to the terms in a spirit of cooperation with the governor and his schedule. The examination would take place July 25th. The 23-member special grand jury also subpoenaed a bevy of evidence from Kemp's office, which Wade said must be made available 72 hours before the testimony. Among the requested documents is anything that represents, explains, and provides context about the January November 2020 election and the 60 days after, the certification of the presidential electors on January 6th, and the rally held at the Capitol. Now, that was scheduled to be at the end of July, the sworn testimony. In fact, the governor's office handed over all of the documents. According to the governor's office, There were boxes and boxes of documents, precisely 40 banker's boxes worth of documents containing 137,000 pages of documents that were handed over uh, in July. Well, guess what? The prosecutor, Fannie Willis, decided to have a fundraiser for the Democrats' lieutenant gubernatorial nominee against Burt Jones, the Republican gubernatorial nominee. Burt Jones, she's investigating him because Burt Jones, the Republican lieutenant gubernatorial nominee in Georgia, was one of the supposed electors 
who was going to stand in for the GOP if Congress cast doubt on Georgia's electoral college vote. The Republicans would be ready to go and say, no, no, we're the real ones. Count us instead. So she's investigating the lieutenant gubernatorial nominee in Georgia and decides to hold a fundraiser for the Democrat opponent. So the judge in the case says, hold up, you can't investigate this guy if you're holding a fundraiser for his opponent. And the DA had the audacity to say, well, it's, it's different, it's different. No, it's not. It's political. You can't be investigating someone while you're fundraising for his opponent. And I can't believe they didn't realize this would be a problem. Kind of gives proper context to what happened next, does it not? The governor was going to give his sworn statement videotaped, handed over all the documents, and the district attorney's office abruptly canceled what they wanted. They agreed and they wanted a videotaped sworn statement by the governor, and he was willing to give it to them. And instead, what did they do? Turns out the DA decided they were going to subpoena him instead and make a big deal out of it, and haul him through like Rudy Giuliani, let all the cameras see him going in, all of that. It's an election season in Georgia. And who is he running against? Stacey Abrams. And guess who Fannie Willis is supporting? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You see where this goes? You see where this goes? She held a fundraiser for the lieutenant gubernatorial nominee for the Democrats. You know she's supporting Stacey Abrams, and she was willing to give him a videotape deposition, videotape statement, and now, nope, basically going to perp walk the governor into the grand jury room with all the cameras, just like Rudy Giuliani, and turn it into an election spectacle. So the governor's office in Georgia has filed a massive motion, a 121-page motion in Fulton County Superior Court. The lawyer acknowledged that the sworn statement was canceled and accused the DA of gamesmanship with the grand jury process and deception as it served the governor with a subpoena. This is in the, from the document. Unfortunately, what began as an investigation into election interference has itself devolved into its own mechanism of election interference. This is particularly egregious when directed towards the state's highest executive, who is not accused of any wrongdoing and is occupied with the business of governing. Now, here's the thing. The governor has sovereign immunity. He has executive privilege as well. His conversations with his staff about the election are privileged. It's one reason to do the sworn statement so that he can bypass all of the things he's not allowed to talk about. It would seem to make sense that they would at least delay hearing from him until after the November election. But no, no, she essentially wants to drag him in, cameras rolling, seeing him coming into the place, as if he's done something wrong when he's the man who really Trump tried to beat. This can't wait, really, this can't wait until after the November election. Really, this can't wait until after the November election. Are you kidding me? The whole thing has been handled in such an amateurish way by the DA's office. It's a national story. See, and what the media nationally is leaving out, they're starting to cast dispersions on Brian Kemp. Can can you believe this? So the national media is now casting dispersions on Georgia's governor, the man who defied Trump, the man who beat Trump. Trump found someone to run against him. The guy ran against Trump's handpicked candidate, David Perdue, overwhelmingly crushed him. And now the media is like, hmm, what is Kemp hiding about the stolen election? Why doesn't he want to go to get his subpoena and go before the grand jury? What's he hiding? Was he involved in in the conspiracy? This is the idiocy and the brain damage of the National Press Corps on the story. And it's ridiculous that a prosecutor who is backing Kemp's opponent would cancel at the very last minute a video statement from him in favor of bringing him before the grand jury in the middle of an election campaign when she's backing his opponent. At least wait until after the election is over if you absolutely must get him there under subpoena. Wait for his testimony. But they don't want to do that either. 
which makes this whole thing now seem like what started off as an inquiry into what actually happened is now a way to try to score points for the Democrats and Stacey Abrams. It's ridiculous. And the national media is now covering this as if Kemp has something to hide. Really? The man who Donald Trump accused of stealing the election, who Donald Trump found someone to run against, who beat Donald Trump's candidate, who stood up for the Constitution and did the right thing and stood up for the integrity of the election, and now suddenly they're casting doubts on him, all to help Stacey Abrams which is why probably the rest of this farce should be wound down now and people go about their lives and business. This is the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan, wherever you are nationwide. You need your business to grow. They want to help your business grow. If you need access to big loans, $750,000 or more, talk to First Liberty. They might be able to help you get to yes, where a lot of banks have been saying no. They make their own lending decisions. I've known the Frost family for years. They're good people. They've been doing this since the 90s. You're buying a building, building a building, growing your franchise. FirstLibertyGA.com. FirstLibertyGA.com. Doesn't matter whether you're in Honolulu, Hawaii, or, I don't know, Hawkinsville, Georgia. They can help you. Now, I got to move on to other stuff. Chicken wing prices are down. This is good. This is actually good. Um, here is the report. This is from, where is it? This is from the Today Show this morning. Got some good news for you. Just in time. Oh, come on. Got to turn the audio up. Football season, chicken wing prices have now dropped to below their pre-pandemic levels. The wholesale price is now at a four-year low. You'll probably remember wings went soaring when the pandemic hit and Americans were stuck at home snacking, but demand has slowed with so many people now returning to work and also because many restaurants switched from expensive wings to the cheaper boneless. Great version. news for Bones with Sauce fans That's this right. morning. I so chicken wing prices are down. Um, will Elizabeth Warren thank the uh, chicken, big chicken, for being willing to take a hit, lowering prices? Will Joe Biden, who attacked uh, the poultry and the beef industry for raising prices and taking advantage of people. Will they will they thank them now for reversing course or admit they were wrong? Of course not. It was always a supply demand issue. It was never actually about um, taking massive profits. But I got to tell you guys, before the show, I realized we were out of milk because my kids just didn't tell me we were out of milk. And 15 minutes for the show, thank goodness the public's grocery store is right across the street from my house. 15 minutes, I was there and back and still had time to spare. I mean, it took me all the 10 minutes to get there and back and buy a gallon of milk. It was $4 on the nose, exactly $4. Rarely do you go to the grocery store and you get something where there are no cents involved. It's exactly $4 when you included the tax. $4 for a gallon of milk, $4. And that's actually down some from what it was, but it was exactly $4 with tax for that gallon of milk, which is still pretty expensive. And I've got friends who have a lot of kids and they go through a lot of milk. And this whole idea from the, the Biden administration of, well, you know, you just, you, you gotta, you gotta come to terms and you gotta save money. Um, it, you know, Gina McCarthy, the environmental czar for the White House, is talking about we have to take a great leap forward. You know where the great leap forward comes from? It comes from Mao in China, uh, the massive disruptions that led to the destruction of the Chinese economy. And she wants a great leap forward in this country. I've got that audio. I want to play it for you. And it's perfect to tie it into the CDC. Have you heard the CDC? They're shaking things up. They're admitting they made mistakes, probably not the mistakes some of you think they made. They're admitting they made some mistakes. I want to talk about that. There is some breaking news happening at this moment, though. Brian Stelter at CNN is out. Uh, Brian Stelter, the head of Reliable Sources, the anchor for Reliable Sources, has lost his job. Not only that, uh, they're removing his entire staff from CNN. None of the producers and writers, anybody involved in the show, will be reassigned at CNN. They're all out uh, from CNN. Um, so CNN making some big shakeups, including getting rid of reliable sources. When we come back though, the CDC and the white house is great leap forward. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number. If you want to call in, you're more than welcome to call in 877-973-7425. Phone lines are open and operators are standing by. Now, I, I got to play you this Gina McCarthy audio. Gina McCarthy is the White House environmental czar. She, well, you know, um, 
John Kerry is the emissary for the White House who travels the globe on his private jet, uh, boring people to death. And Gina McCarthy is the one at the White House overseeing policy. I want you to listen to her statement here. Well, Allison, we have to have every country step forward. We lost a lot of ground, a lot of credibility in the prior administration. The, part of the, the sort of enthusiasm and energy today is that I think we all know that this put us back on the map, that pushed the U.S. back in a leadership position. We will continue to negotiate with China and get them into the program. But frankly, we had to have something big. We had to take a big leap forward. This is the biggest piece of legislation that our country has ever advanced by 10 times as much in terms of reductions of any other law. But it frankly is being looked at internationally as perhaps the biggest and most significant step forward, not just in the United States, but in our international community. This is the only way we are going to get China to the table is if we outcompete them and we out and we outsmart them moving forward. That's what this is all about. We'll capture the clean energy economy and they'll have to try to figure out how they they then rejoin the community of countries that know that we have to take action on climate internationally. It is a worldwide challenge, not an individual country challenge. Right. Right. She wants a great leap forward. The great leap forward was the second five-year plan of the People's Republic of China when Mao was still in charge. The whole purpose was to reconstruct the society from agrarian into a proper communist society by giving people communes. Mao insisted that if you went communist with a great leap forward, it would multiply grain yields and it would bring industry to the countryside. And the result is that millions of people died, between 15 and 55 million. It caused the largest famine. It was the second largest famine in human history. It was a collapse of society, and the economy shrank. And this is what Gina McCarthy says this White House wants to do, a great leap forward. And what is the great leap forward that they want us to do? They want us to leap forward by converting from a fossil fuel-based society to an electricity-based society that doesn't run on fossil fuels. Gina McCarthy is a smart person. I may disagree with her, but she's not dumb. I can't believe she would use the phrase great leap forward when it comes to what they're advocating, except she did. Surely she knows what it means. I mean, it it caused a, a famine of up to 55 million people dead in China. I mean, this was the phrase that Mao himself used, a great leap forward. It cratered the economy. It was designed to make China go from an agrarian society where people had their own property into a communal society where communism was imposed fully on all of the land and hoped to incentivize industry going out to farms and helping. And instead, it killed 55 million people, starved them to death nearly collapsed the whole society. Had the Chinese communists not controlled the military, there would have been a counter-revolution and they would have been out of power. And now along comes the environmental guru for Joe Biden saying, we need a great leap forward in this country. It's going to happen the same way. In California, they're telling people, It's a serious event out there now. You need to not use electricity. So in Washington, you have the Marie Antoinette's of the Biden administration telling the poors, just go get a battery-powered car and a new heat pump for your house, and we'll give you a tax credit, you poor people. Stop complaining about the cost of stuff. You don't have money for groceries, but we'll give you a tax credit after you've bought your new heat pump. 
They want us all to go out and buy battery powered cars. And then they tell us, well, we can't keep the lights on. So don't plug in those cars. We told you, you had to buy you pores are ungrateful for the kindnesses of Washington. When you can't keep the lights on, you can't expect people to move to a battery powered car. This isn't about Texas. This is California. The left wants to highlight, well, Texas, you know, they refuse to be on the national power grid. They have their own power grid. They screwed up. It's Texas's fault. Don't blame everyone else. Californians have the problem. Europeans are having this problem. Your great leap forward is a leap backwards in time to the dark ages. The last time we depended on the sun and the wind for power. Can't do it. You cannot do it. The reason is you need base load power. Base load power is the power that you can flip a switch and turn on immediately. And right now, in some parts of the country, you have hydroelectric, but not in all parts of the country. Your base load power comes from coal powered plants, natural gas powered plants, and nuclear plants. And the people who want the great leap forward to battery power in this country don't want any base load power plants that can be made because they don't want nuclear, they don't want gas and they don't want coal. They want to imagine a world where there are massive batteries that store the excess power from the wind power and the solar panels. And when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow, the batteries are used. What happens when the batteries are run out? But wait, what happens to the batteries first? Because we live in a world where you cannot build those batteries. Does not exist. It's not real. They can't make them. It's bizarre wish casting from the left. Their great leap forward is designed to set us back. And this is something I don't think many of you appreciate. Their great leap forward is intended to roll back Western civilization by design. You don't have to believe me. Go read the environmentalists yourself. Western style capitalism is bad. They want a command and control society like the communist Chinese have. They truly believe that a command and control society where Washington controls the economy would be better for all of us. They truly believe that a demand side command and control economy without those pesky capitalists innovating would be better for the environment. Why? Why? Go back to the pandemic. Globally, the entire world fell into what amounted to a depression. Employment collapsed, prices collapsed, everything collapsed. And all the environmentalists were like, but the air in Los Angeles, there's no smog. You can see the bottom you can see the bottom of the canals in Venice. Nature is healing as mankind stays inside. You had environmentalists start writing about how the economic slowdown was good for the environment. I'm not making this up. And so that's what they want. They want an economic slowdown, and the best way to have the economy slow down is to have the government in charge of it because governments are inefficient. And because governments are inefficient, inefficiencies take over, inefficiencies cause more friction, and the friction causes inertia. Things are in motion, stay in motion until an opposite force is placed on them, and then they slow. They want that opposite force. They want government inefficiencies to slow down the efficiencies of a market so that the economy slows down and we do not grow as fast. And if we do not grow as fast, we pollute less. It's all by design. Gina McCarthy's great leap forward is by design to cause the same sort of chaos that Mao caused in China. And they think it's for your own good. Remember, 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 to this day, the Communist Party of China maintains that though there was terrible suffering and misery, the great leap forward actually wound up being good because it fully fundamentally transformed the nation into a communist nation. And it is through that communism that China has prospered. They believe this. It is part of their dogma now. For a while, they walked away from it. But they've returned to it under Xi, this belief that it is was a good thing. 
And now you have the Biden administration thinking a great leap forward in this country is a good thing as well. I know it sounds crazy to some of you, but just read the environmentalists. They're deeply anti-capitalist. They are very much in favor of a demand side command and control economy because they believe that that will cause inefficiencies that will slow down capitalism and slow down innovation and allow the planet to catch up, evolve, and heal. That's what they want. They want to wipe out the American way of life because they think we are a problem for planet Earth. Now, before I go any further, I want to take Bob's phone call. Bob, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show, Bob. How are you? I'm doing all right, Eric. I'm going to blame my call on the enlightenment I've gotten and questioning from listening to you. Uh Uh-oh. I thought about and I followed what was done with the abortion case in the Supreme Court. Uh Uh-huh. And it's, you know, then they're right. Um, They said that it's not in, it's not a federal responsibility. It's not defined uh, as a federal um, responsibility. Therefore, it's a state's rights. And I'm listening to everything, and I, it is germane to what you're talking about. The uh, green energy, uh, a, a lot of the pork that's in a lot of the bills, where they give money to states that that um, have aren't uh, federally solvent or financially solvent, rather. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. What in the federal constitution gives the federal government the authority to do that. Ha <laughs> ha. See, this this is my problem here, Bob, is a lot of these things we've just allowed the federal government to do without much power. Where the federal government gets a lot of its power from is from the Commerce Clause. Uh, and essentially where the Commerce Clause uh, comes in is the Supreme Court has long maintained that as long as it is tangentially related to the flow of goods and services across state lines as keeping the lights on are, then the government at the federal level can be involved with it. Um, We really have to rethink the Commerce Clause. We actually probably have the composition of the Supreme Court right now to begin rolling that back and devolving some of these things to the states. We haven't gotten there yet, though, because we don't have a model case to be able to advance the situation. But I think we're probably going to get to the point where we can and will rein in more of the federal government because they are doing way more than Article 1, Section 8 allows them to do, but they're doing it largely because progressive courts in years gone by have allowed them. If we could rein in the Chevron doctrine, among other things, at the Supreme Court, we might be able to get that done. And honestly, neutering Washington, D.C. would be a very good thing for you and for me and for everyone else and our rights. Now, I got to tell you about the Eden Pure Thunderstorm before I get out of here because I brag about it all the time. I really do like this device. I really am a customer. I really do use it. I really do keep it in my suitcase. Now, Eden Pure sells it as an air purifier, and it works that way. I don't want to. I don't want to kid you. It works that way, and it's filterless, so you don't have to keep getting new filter subscriptions. It just has uh, metal plates that cause a static charge that attract the mildew, the mold, the pollen, the bacteria, uh, the dust, and it works. You just wipe it out on occasion and you don't have to get a filter subscription. But where this thing is a genius device is its ability to eliminate odors. Uh, You can put one in your car. You can put one in your hotel room like I do if they stink. Fire this thing up. You can plug it into the wall, or you can power it with a USB cord. And you just leave it alone for a little while, and it'll wipe out odors. You can get three of them at EdenPureDeals.com, EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is ERIC3, E-R-I-C-K-3, no space. Why would you need three? Well, I keep one in my suitcase, and then I keep one now out back on my back porch because uh, our back porch is a screened-in glass porch. It was actually a, a little back patio that the previous owners of the house put a roof over and screened in, and we glassed it in, and it can get a little funky back there sometimes. The Eden Pure takes care of it. Uh, I have one in the kitchen because we don't have an exhaust vent, uh, and so if I fry something, Something in the kitchen instead of using essential oils, I just fire up the Eden Pure Thunderstorm and it works. Three of them for less than $200 is a great deal. And you, you get three, you get free shipping. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is Eric3, E R I C K 3. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. Well, it is too late. Uh, I got other stuff I got to talk about. There's actually some breaking news that I've got to talk about here. The federal uh, magistrate. 
Uh, Reinhardt down in Florida says he intends to unseal part, but not all of the affidavit related to the search of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, this is from the Washington Post. Bruce Reinhardt, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's former lawyer, said from the bench that he would make a determination next Wednesday after the government submits proposed redactions. He's inclined to unseal some of the affidavits central to the FBI search and has instructed the Justice Department to redact the document in a way that would not undermine its ongoing investigation if made public. The entire affidavit is unlikely to be unsealed with lawyers from the media seeking its release, saying they understood some of the material, including witness identity, should remain secret. Reinhardt convened the meeting after multiple media outlets, including the Washington Post, called on the court to release all filings related to the search. He declined to accept the government's argument that the entire affidavit should remain sealed because it would chill witnesses, expose grand jury material, and reveal the next steps of the investigation that's only in its early stages. Attorneys for media outlets argued the affidavit should be made public given the historic importance of the investigation. So essentially what the judge is going to do is go to the Justice Department and say, you black out those parts that you believe are compromising and everything else gets released. And by the way, I may decide to not black out some of the stuff you've decided to black out. And in those cases, I'll let you appeal before we make it public. Here's the notable point. They said it was just about recovering these documents. Clearly not. Think of all of the people on the left who insisted all they wanted were these documents back. No, 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 no. It had nothing to do with January 6th. I, I, I know they said it was January 6th, and then, no, no, we have to take their word for it. It wasn't about January 6th. They just wanted the documents back and. Doesn't appear. It appears it's about January 6th, doesn't it? I mean, the, the way the, the, the left in particular has flipped back and forth over and over and over again on this particular issue that, yes, it's about January 6th. Wait, 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 wait. They say it's not, so it's not. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It must be about something other than national security espionage. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, they just want the documents. Now there's clearly some sort of ongoing uh, investigation in those early stages. Y'all, they're trying to find a way to throw Donald Trump in jail, which is why they should give it up. Goes back to that Sam Harris interview. They want to find a way to stop um, Donald Trump from ever winning the presidency. And all they're going to do is get him elected. The man's raised a million dollars a day since August 8th. He is more popular than Joe Biden in the polling averages. They're going to get the man reelected. If they're so insistent on stopping Donald Trump, Stop giving him oxygen to fan the flames that they think he's fanning, but they can't help themselves. It's a sick codependency between the Democrats and Donald Trump. They think it, he helps them, but in reality, they're helping him, and they're too stupid to realize it. So when he's president again, well, see, I told you so. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.